honored guests, please join with me in welcoming Associate Dean of the College of Arts and Letters, Melinda wilson Rainey, who will now deliver the California State University Sacramento Land Acknowledgement. Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight, and congratulations to all of our graduates. I am now going to read the university's unofficial land acknowledgement. Sacramento State acknowledges with respect the land our campus is on today was and continues to be the homelands of the indigenous peoples of this area, the Nisan, specifically the Nisim Powan and Miwok. Now my pleasure to welcome up Bachelor of Music major Isabel Luis Abayas, who will sing the national anthem. So please rise. It's so wonderful to have in-house talent. <laughs> so welcome to our graduate students who will be receiving their master's degrees, their friends, their family, and their faculty. Today we are enacting a ritual known as hooding. Each of our graduates will receive their hoods from either their department chair or their graduate coordinator with the assistance of Dean of Graduate Studies, Chevelle Newsom, or Associate Dean of Graduate Studies, Stephanie Biagetti. So let's talk about what this hood means and what this ritual stands for. On the one hand, as invented during the Middle Ages, when the heavy robes actually kept academic war academics warm in the drafty monasteries and universities in which they studied, the regalia was actually equalizing. Various components of the regalia signaled one's place in the academic hierarchy. While the MA hood is not as long as the one worn by those who have earned a doctorate, it does identify the wearer as higher in status than the students who have earned a BA. The colors identify the university from which the degree was earned, while the velvet around the edges signify the field of study. Now at the end of commencement, the provost or president will officially confer the degrees, stating, I quote, I confer upon each of you the appropriate honorary doctorate, master's, and bachelor's degrees, with all of the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. The honors and privileges are primarily those less tangible and more internal than those that might have been given in the past. However, that doesn't mean they aren't real. The hood you are about to receive and the degree it represents are symbolic of the skill you have attained, as well as the confidence that should come with having achieved something a still small percentage of people accomplish. They once gave now, whether you wrote a thesis, an individual and original right scholarship, or studied for a comprehensive exam, or engaged in a creative or academic project, or some combination of the culminating experiences, you had to exercise and demonstrate a level of independent effort. Of course, you didn't have to do it completely alone. You had faculty advisors and mentors, as well as family and friends cheering you on. But like Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade, you had to take a leap of faith. Now let me also speak briefly of the responsibilities that come along with your degree. Along with the particular knowledge and skills you have attained, you have learned how to think creatively, critically, and independently. And those are skills you need to deploy not only in your chosen profession, but in your lives beyond the walls of academia. And educated citizenry is critical to democracy 
and to addressing the wicked problems we face in our world today. In the College of Arts and Letters, we believe that the study of the arts and humanities can lead to lives lived with purpose, with intentionality, and with dedication to helping others live good and meaningful lives. Public humanities, social practice, or community practice arts ask us to apply the values and perspectives of the humanities and the power of the visual and performing arts to advance the public good. You are also responsible as recipients of a master's degree for recognizing, and this might sound a little paradoxical, the limits of your mastery, for recognizing what you don't know and for having the tools to pursue new knowledge. So please do not let the ancient rituals associated with our regalia bind you to the past and cloister you from the world around us. But graduate education, particularly in the arts and humanities, isn't pursued for fame and riches. Although you may have the opportunity for those as well. Most of us pursued our graduate degrees because we are genuinely passionate about learning in general and our chosen fields. You have chosen to join a community of artists and scholars and have worked hard to become recognized members of the, that and other communities. So even as you may leave Sacramento State and engage productively in those other communities, please know that you will always remain part of our community of artist scholars. <laughs> the friends, colleagues, and mentors you have met here will continue with you in spirit and in access. So congratulations to all of you, and may you wear your hoods with pride. Isabel Eniguez, a comprehensive exam as well. And last but certainly not least, Caitlin Luke also completed a comprehensive exam. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to introduce our student speaker, Paula Grinstead Duretti who is receiving her MA in Spanish. As Professor Boto wrote in his nomination, Paula has a 4.0 GPA and has performed with the same astonishing results in all the graduate courses she has taken. All faculty in the Spanish master's program agreed that she was the best student to represent the College of Arts and Letters as a Latina who embodies the importance of diversity in our community. Her goal is to help underrepresented and underprivileged members of our community to succeed in their learning experiences and to become global citizens in the California of the 21st century. Please welcome Paula Grinstead Duretti. Good evening. I would like to begin by thanking everyone present today, Dr. Meyer, for allowing me to speak tonight, the faculty for guiding students all year, fellow students who have reached another milestone, and friends and families who have supported us through this journey. Today marks a significant academic achievement in our education, a culmination of years of dedication, perseverance, and passion. It wasn't an easy journey while trying to manage school, work, family, and other responsibilities. But we did it. And we can't help but feel pride in what we have accomplished. As a Latino student born, raised, and educated in Argentina, pursuing a graduate degree in Spanish has not only deepened my understanding and appreciation for my own language and culture, it has also shaped my personal and professional aspirations. Throughout my graduate studies, I have been fortunate to engage with a diverse range of perspectives and methodologies. Together, we created a community. I should probably thank Erin Blunt for creating Zoom and Jan Kuhn and Ryan Acton for creating WhatsApp. I don't think they were able to make it tonight, unfortunately. 
These platforms enable us to collaborate in very efficient ways. And also, made our phones blow up with messages, especially when trying to understand the psychological articles assigned by Dr. Bota, or when analyzing tiempos de silencio by Luis Martin Santos, also assigned by Dr. Bota. Because of my experiences during my graduate education, I'm eager to continue on to a doctoral degree. I'm confident I will be able to achieve this thanks to the education Sacramento State University has provided us. On behalf of all graduates, I want to again express sincere appreciation to our professors for the counsel and guidance. Each one of you has influenced our academic and personal growth. Thank you. On behalf of the entire College of Arts and Letters, I would like to congratulate each and every one of you. Now masters of your discipline, prepared to head into the world with confidence and the skills, knowledge, and experience that justify that confidence. You are heading out into a world that is deeply troubled in so very many ways. Our communities, both large and small, local and global, are fracturing under the pressure of problems that seem eternal irresolvable and intractable. As humanity struggles to come to grips with the impacts of global warming, of conflict and war, of sharing increasingly scarce resources, and of the meaning and place of values such as freedom, peace, and respect, I have confidence, we have confidence, that this is a world you are prepared to meet, that you challenge yourselves and each other Indeed, that you challenge us, the generations before you, to lay the foundations of those generations to come that will make communities better, more resilient, more forgiving, more inclusive, and more equitable than we find them today. No pressure, but we have expectations of you. <laughs> we have those expectations of you because you have them of yourselves. As Dean Meyer noted, a master's, as master's degree candidates, you are here intentionally.